Hey everyone, it's Mr. Math here with another YouTube video. Before this video even starts, I advise all of you to grab a quick healthy snack, as eating healthy snacks enhances the performance of mathletes everywhere. So, I had some Greek yogurt with honey before I'm filming this video, so everybody can just pause the video right now and grab a quick healthy snack, and I'll see you in a little while. All right, welcome back. I hope that that was very refreshing, very healthy. Um, your chewing did not bother me. So let's get into the video now. Today, as you know, we'll be doing trig substitution of a trinomial. So basically, well, here, I'll just get into it. Usually when we have trig substitution, we're gonna be doing something of the form integral dx over the square root of a squared minus x squared. We have two terms usually, not three. So that's our first key difference. Um, and I'm not gonna really get into the details here with this more basic example. Just try to draw some parallels for when we do the more unique, the more kind of advanced example of the trinomial. Um, we'll factor out an a squared from this radical, and that'll of course become one over the square root of a squared, which is one over a. So this constant will be here. And we'll still have dx, of course. And now this, we have it in the form square root one minus something. Um, and in this case, if we just set this equal to sine squared theta so we can employ our, our Pythagorean identities, um, it turns out that sine of theta is just the square root of this, which is easy to take. Sine of theta is equal to x over a. And then we can, of course, just find theta if we just take the arc sine of this, so theta is equal to the arc sine of x over a, and we can also so solve for x fairly easily. If we just cross multiply this sine theta is equal to x over a, we get that x is equal to a sine theta, and then we'll want to take dx, of course. dx over d theta is equal to a cosine theta, so dx is equal to a cosine theta d theta. And we'll plug this in. We basically have three terms here. This 1 over a is just a constant. We could just take it out of the integral, but I'll just leave it there for right now. So we're going to have 1 over a times dx, which is equal to this in terms of theta and d theta, times this square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared. Of course, we've done this before. This is just a Pythagorean identity. So we end up just getting 1 over cosine theta. We've substituted in trig functions effectively, and now it's gonna be easier to solve. So of course the a's will cancel out and the cosine theta's will cancel out, and we're just left with the integral of d theta, which is just theta plus c, c being the constant. And we'll just plug back in theta. Theta we said was equal to arc sine of x over a. So therefore, the integral of dx over the square root of a squared minus x squared is equal to arc sine of x over a plus c. All right, so now to get into this trinomial problem that we've been trying to solve, we're going to want to first, the key difference is that we have three terms here in this trinomial, so we can't really use trig sub immediately, so it seems. So we really just want to get this into something squared minus something, because that's what we did earlier. Well, of course, we've seen in class that we can, of course, also from Algebra 2, completing the square can get us into that form. So there's no, a is equal to 1 in this, so we don't have to factor out an a in this example or anything. Um, just complete the square like normal. We'll subtract c. We'll add b squared over 4 to each side to make this thing on the left here into a perfect square trinomial. And then we can get x plus b over 2 squared, we'll add c, we'll subtract b squared over 4 from each side, and we can just plug this in. Both of these are equivalent. I just changed the form of this strategically, so now we have something squared plus something. And now what we're going to want to do, we'll just do what we did in the more basic example. It's no different, we're just going to take out of this radical and x plus b over 2 squared. So we'll just factor that out. Now we really want this to be in the form square root of 1 minus something. 
that's no big deal. We can just, you know, do multiply this by negative one, this whole fraction, and then we'll have one minus that. And last but not least, of course, we have square root of something squared. So those should just cancel out here. Now, we're noticing a key difference already. Usually we had this kind of one over square root of one minus something, and we had the dx before. But then we had this constant earlier. Now instead of a constant, since we're doing a more general, a unique version of this with the b's and the c's, we're going to have x plus b over 2 instead of a constant. So this might become a problem later. But let's just keep um, We'll just use sine squared theta is equal to b squared over 4 minus squared over x plus b over 2 squared just because we want to employ those Pythagorean identities. And then, of course, that means that 1 over cosine theta is literally just equal to this entire term. So that'll be pretty easy to when we do our trig substitution here. Of course, then sine of theta is just equal to the square root of sine squared of theta. And then we can solve for x. This is just some kind of algebraic manipulation of variables. We'll cross multiply this, and then we'll divide each side by sine of theta, and then we'll subtract b over 2 from each side, and we'll solve for x. Now we're going to want to find dx. So dx, well, first of all, let's just ask ourselves, what is the d over d theta of 1 over sine theta, of cosecant of theta? So uh, you probably know this very standard integral here, just one of the trig functions. We'll just, we can just use the quotient rule, though, if we want to quickly derive this without having to memorize anything. Of course, the quotient rule says that the derivative of u over v is equal to v du minus u dv over v squared. So in this case, u is a constant, u is just 1. So of course, du is going to be 0. So 0 minus uh, dv, well, u dv, but u is just 1. So it's going to be 0 minus cosine theta over v squared over sine squared theta. So this is just basic quotient rule. This is basic differentiation, nothing fancy here. We're going to have negative cosine theta over sine squared theta. And now we can, of course, use this to find dx dx is going to be just this constant, b squared over 4 minus c, the square root of that is just a constant. So it'll just be that constant times d over d theta, 1 over sine theta. So then, of course, and this b over 2, that's just differentiation 101. You derive a constant, it's 0. So we'll have dx over d theta is equal to negative square root of b squared over 4 minus c cosine theta over sine squared theta. We'll multiply each side by d theta, and we get pretty easily here just the form of dx in terms of theta, of course, b over c, and d theta. So now we're kind of ready to just employ our trig substitution. We found this term. We found the dx in terms of theta. But now we just have to find this 1 over x plus b over 2. That won't be that hard. Um, from earlier, we found that x is equal to this. So if we just add b squared, or if we just add b over 2 to each side, and then, I don't know, take 1 over each side, we'll get that 1 over x plus b over 2 is equal to sine theta over, b, over the square root of b squared over 4 minus c. That's just more algebraic manipulation with variables, nothing fancy there. And from earlier on, we found 1 over or we found what this term is equal to, and we found what dx is equal to in terms of theta. So now we can just apply our trig substitution here to three terms, and we'll get it to be equal to this just by plugging in everything. Now immediately we're going to see, okay, our cosine thetas are going to cancel out, our square root of b squared over 4 minus c's are going to cancel out, and then only one of these sine of thetas is going to cancel out. So we're going to be left with the integral of negative d theta over sine theta. So this is a standard integral, the integral of cosecant of theta. 
I'm not going to get into it because it's, I, it's a little complicated to prove. So you can just look it up online if you want to know why it's equal to this. But basically, the integral of cosecant of... Ooh, I'm sorry. There should be a d theta right here. I am very sorry. The integral of cosecant theta d theta is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus c. Oh, um, in this case, c is just a constant, by the way. And then, if, of course, if we have this negative here, it'll just cancel out the negative in front of the ln. So from earlier, we found sine of theta is equal to the square root of b squared over 4 minus c over x plus b over 2. So just like earlier, we can solve for theta. Theta is just going to be the arc sine of sine of theta. And then I'm going to just call this b squared over 4 minus c over x plus b over 2. I'm just going to call that u. It's not like I'm using u sub here, but I just want... Instead of writing this out each time, this big thing kind of, I'm just going to call it u, and then we can replug it in later on. So, this natural log of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta, that's going to turn into the natural log of 1 over sine of theta arc sine of u, because literally, 1 over sine theta is equal or sine of theta is equal to sine of arc sine of this so it's sine of arc sine of u and then we have plus one over tan of arc sine of u now from pre-calc this is just one of our trig identities it's not really important if you don't know this but tangent of arc sine of something is equal to something over the square root of one minus that something squared so now we can just plug in what we know 1 over sine of arc sine of u. Sine and arc sine are just inverse functions. So that's just going to be, they'll cancel out. So we'll just have 1 over u plus 1 over this is just square root of 1 minus u squared over u. Now we're going to have to, these, these already have common denominators, so we might as well just add them. So this whole thing here is going to be equal to well, I've kind of dropped the natural log off for now. I'll add that on later. But this thing inside, the cosecant theta plus cotangent theta, is going to be equal to 1 plus the square root of 1 minus u squared over u. Okay, so just copy this over. We can plug in now our u in terms of x and b and c. So we'll multiply 1 over u. So that's x plus b over 2 over the square root of b squared over 4 minus c times 1 plus the square root of 1 minus u squared. Okay, and now I can distribute this x plus b over 2 into this parenthesis. I can just use the distributive property. So I'm going to distribute it into this 1 and then into this radical. So when we distribute it into this 1, of course, it's just going to be x plus b over 2. And then when I distribute it into the radical, um, I have to remember two things. First of all, I'm really distributing in the square root of x plus b over 2 squared. And also, I just have to remember that this negative sign is going to carry over into the c term as well. So I'm going to have x plus b over 2 plus the square root of x plus b over 2 squared minus b squared over 4 plus c over the square root of b squared over 4 minus c. Um, if you remember from earlier, way back on the very beginning of this video, well, not the very beginning, but right when we started to actually integrate this trinomial here, we completed the square and we said that this was equal to x squared plus bx plus c. So we can just substitute that in. So we'll have our final answer, the integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus bx plus c is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus b over 2 plus the square root of x squared plus bx plus c over the square root of b squared over 4 minus c plus c. Um, just don't get confused. This c, this c is like the constant from the x squared plus bx plus c. I should have really denoted these differently. This c is just a constant that we're adding on to our interval because, well, we do that always. 
Okay. So here's kind of the suspense for the end of the video. Here's the twist ending. Um, the problem is that this is not really a perfect... Well, it's not always true. So I used an, integr an integral calculator online to just test because we want to see our formula in use. You know, we want to pick values of B and C and see if we get this. So first of all, I just copied this. I just snipped this from the site. I said B is equal to 6, C is equal to 8. And this looks pretty close to what we had. So it's the square root of x squared plus bx plus c plus x plus 6 over 2, b over 2, over, now if we actually calculate what this denominator is equal to, it's going to be 36 over 4, that's 9, 9 minus c, that's 9 minus 8, that's the square root of 1. So it seems like our formula holds for this first example. However, if we do another example, um, the calculator, if I say b is equal to negative 11 and c is equal to 18, we're going to get something completely different out. Okay, so we're going to get, first of all, we have this two term here. We have 2x minus b instead of, or plus b, I guess, instead of b over 2. So that's a little bit weird. And also, if we're dividing by b squared over 4 minus c, the square root of that, we should really be getting 121 over 4, that's 30.25, minus 18, that's 12.25, the square root of that is 3.5. So in this example, we're multiplying by 2 times this, when really we should be dividing by 3.5. So obviously our formula held true for this first example, but it didn't hold true for this second example, which is a bummer. And then I kind of cheated here. I used the integral calculator. I literally just typed in what we were trying to do. And it came out with this formula that matches the second one. And it, it tried to factor this, but it really it's just the square root of x squared plus bx plus c still. However, this formula obviously doesn't work for the first one. So we kind of have two formulas here for this integral that work in two different cases but don't work in two different cases. So obviously, this indefinite integral does not hold true for all ordered pairs, b comma c. So there are more than one possible indefinite integrals that this is equal to. Um, what I want you guys to do for a little bit of homework, you can go through all of the steps for integration and determine the constraints for the ordered pair b comma c so that the above integral is true. So find what constraints we need to apply because obviously for some values, for some ordered pairs b, c, this works, but for some it doesn't. So go through and develop some constraints that we have to apply to b and c so that, that we have to apply in order for this to work. So I guess the first person to comment the answer will get a shout out in the next video. So that can be very, I hope that some people will want that and they'll try. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna end off this video. Everybody have a great summer. Be sure to comment the answer. And yeah, so basically we just used, just to recap the video, we used trig sub to solve for this and we got out, we obviously must have assumed something we must have assumed that like a radical is positive or we must have assumed that like an arc sine function is, I don't know, between negative one and one inclusive. And we got out this form that only works in some cases. So yeah, try to find out the answer to that and have a great summer.